you know, wood turners, what do most people do? I mean, you know, you show another wood turner your work. What's the first thing they do? Right. And so I don't know many wood turners that have fingers long enough to reach the bottom of this. So what I did was I just cut it in half and made it so that you can actually get your fingers in there, okay? So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So here is my hollow turnings. This is a piece of cherry, and I turned it to a genie bottle, and then I started making stoppers. The first one I made was a walnut, and it was too small here. So the next one I found some ironwood I had, and I didn't like the color combination. So then I had a piece of cherry that was kind of spalted or something, and I didn't like that. So I finally found a piece of scrap that was almost the same tone, and so I ended up with that. So that was my first one. Then my second one, if you remember last month, there was a piece of elm. Back there in the back. You remember that? You're all dead. Um, so anyway, I took it home, and I hollowed it out, and this just has sanding sealer on it. Sanded and sanding sealer, nothing else. And so I thought it looked kind of like it needed something more. And a couple last year, for the last couple of years at Woodcraft, they've had these clarinet bells that are rejects. They're African blackwood. And so I made the African blackwood top to go on it. And it's really tight because the elm was a little wet, but it does fit. It does fit. So anyway. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I didn't get that joke initially. <laughs> he asked me if it was rosewood, and yeah, it took me it took me a few minutes, and then the light went off. And so anyway, I made this for my wife for Mother's Day. My my kids uh, signed it. Um, it is it's hollowed out. Uh, I'm not going to take the flowers out because that's the whole point of it. Uh, but they're silk flowers, so I don't have to buy her flowers again unless I screw up. So hopefully we just get her once and, and be done. Um, and apparently she liked it because she had me make one very similar for her mother. So I guess that means that she liked it. So she her mother got different flowers. But um, anyway. That's that's my hollow turning. Well, this is cherry, and uh, I wood burned it and kind of enjoyed that. Didn't burn any anything up, didn't burn any bits up or start any fires. And uh, this, this is walnut and I carved on it. Uh, last month Kevin talked about the visualizer and the stabilizer. Well on this one I used a wormalizer because there were a lot of wormholes in it. So the <laughs> and, then I, and then I carved it. So this is This was just a uh, piece of Osage orange from our front yard, hollowed and simple lacquer on it. Well, some of the earliest wood I got from the neighbors uh, was this piece of oak that I didn't, you know, and I set it out to dry about three, four years ago, and I didn't know what to do with it until this challenge came up, and so it worked out good.
This was hollowed from a, with a brown nose scraper from a piece of walnut, and I decided it needed a lid, so I made it a lid. It's finished with the Parfix glue that uh, we bought a couple months ago. Everything I turn, I begin thinking I'm going to embellish it, but this turned out, uh, the grain looks so nice and it felt so good. Part of wood turning is know, knowing when to quit, so I quit. I just decided to use up everything I could and hold it. I ended up making a lid, and I have no idea what this is. My sister broke whatever in the world it went on. So that's it. couple of different ones, both of them out of uh, some spalted um, maple that I have. Uh, this one's painted with black uh, milk paint inside just to hide it. Uh, I was going to sand all that and I gave up on that one. Um, this one is actually real interesting looking on the inside. I wish there was a way to light it a little better because the wood grain's prettier on the inside than it is on the out. This is textured uh, using a um, uh, a scaler, a pneumatic scaler, like you get at Harbor Freight. It took about 10 or 15 minutes to texture it, so it's a real quick way of just doing something a little different. So. These are, uh, <coughs> all these pieces of wood are found, like found in my shop somewhere. Uh, Osage orange on the top and camphor, and uh, this is spalted sycamore. And I guess it fits the, fits the description of a hollow form being more open than the size of the opening, so that's all. It's just a uh, Watco finish. And it's glued. Glued. I guess you can say that I can't read, but uh, because I'm always looking for pictures and looking for things that I haven't done. Uh, this is an old magazine, uh, Wood Turning Design, which is no longer pr in print, uh, but it's still a fascinating magazine. And in there, I found this curlicue on the top of a vessel, and I wanted to make it. I wouldn't say that I had a problem making it, but... <laughs> All these pieces here were attempts <laughs> until finally I came up with 2 o'clock in the morning of how to do this and spiral cut this and keep it the same size. And this uh, originally started because I wanted to do something. I've, I've been taking a wood carving class, uh, so I wanted to use wood carving on a turned piece. And this is my first attempt at that. It's also the first time I've ever been able to get my uh, index system on my jet lathe so that I could understand it. It worked. So there it is. <laughs> no.
this is thanks to the lady in Olathe who volunteered to give us wood. And I went and got some. And it's walnut, 100 years old. And it's an attempt to get a live edge, as you can see, is still on there. It's not screwed up too bad. And uh, so this piece was kind of derived from wanting to get a piece that had no common axis anyplace. And so the circle is turned off center to give you the leaving this to the inside of a circle. These are turned off axis this way, this way, and uh, obviously you got to have a flat spot, so you can say it's, pl it's uh, flat. And then the trick is, of course, now I've got a shape. How do you get the hole in the middle? It's supposed to be bigger in the middle, and it is. And uh, so this was an attempt to use double tape, double stick tape, which is real heavy duty tape, and nylon weed cutting twine. Tie it around, pull it up good and tight, and you'd be surprised how tight you can get that. But it doesn't damage the bark, and that's how come the bark is still intact even after going in with a hollowing tool. So thanks to my wife for a little aesthetics. You know, there we are. chunk of of wood that was found I'll stand on my two pianos. It was found on the side of the road and I've been told by reliable audience members that it is sherry. I hollowed out to about right there and then my wrist gave out, but that was okay because the bottom I wanted to have a holder for this so it fits in there and it's pretty sturdy. So I'll turn around and I like to the bottom. It was good. And if you want to cut down a vase that is too tall, just get some uh, fire and ice and you can do it. Get the mic in the right spot. This one is uh, segmented, of course. That's what I've been turning lately, is nothing but it. And uh, each row has got 24 pieces. It's uh, red dyed, and it's got about, oh, maybe five coats of polyurethane on, on it. And it, I've finally figured out, okay, you've got to use sanding sealer, because otherwise the first three coats of polyurethane don't do any good. They just keep soaking in and soaking in and soaking in and soaking in and soaking in, and it, it, it doesn't get any smoother. And I finally figured out also, if you're going to dye something, you've got to put at least a couple of coats on before you start to sand. Otherwise, you're going to sand down through the polyurethane, and chances are you're going to start sanding away your dye. And so, and from previous pieces, I've learned the bottom has to be a solid piece of wood. It can't be segmented, because I have had bad problems with it cracking after a while. So I have to put a solid piece. And I watched Nick Agar with the Robert Sorby texturing tools, and he showed how to put a little flower on the bottom of your piece. Well, this started as a walnut tree on our property, and about five years ago we had a flood that washed the tree, root ball and all, out of the ground. And it lay in the field for about four years, and I uh, cut this section out of the bottom of the tree just above the root ball, put the whole trunk of the tree on the lathe, so I had a chunk of wood that weighed 128 pounds and was 32 inches long. And when I finished, I've got a 25-inch vase that weighs between six and seven pounds. So it actually started from a challenge for my wife because she likes small vases. She does uh, fused glass and makes flowers and things. So I started out, the first vase was about three inches tall and they had one fused glass flower in it. Then she wanted a taller vase and a taller vase. So we progressed from in steps. So this is the last well, hopefully the last in the series, because I can't do anything bigger than this. Thank you.
I was having fun with the hollow form. Um, this one was a piece of mesquite, and it was actually the cutoff because I'd already blown up the portion that I was trying to use, and I was trying to figure out something to do with it. And um, came up with this design kind of based on a Rudo, Rudy Lopez uh, demo that I'd seen. Went through the bottom of it, so I had to glue a piece of walnut on it to <laughs> make it valid again. And then I uh, wanted to top it off because like that, it, it just looked like it was missing something. So my wife's got a bunch of wire laying around. I, she was gone all weekend. I stole her wire and made a little tree to go on it with roots, root ball coming out of the bottom of it. This one, um, aniline dye. Um, I actually, the inside, because you could see a lot of the colors popping through there and because you could see the inside pretty good on this one, I took the uh, rubber seal stuff that you see on TV and sprayed it inside there. I think Mike Thomas said he was going to try that one time. I haven't tried putting water in it. I don't think I would. Um, it seeped out of the little hole in the bottom of there. So <laughs> I don't know if it would hold water. And this one, if anybody that can see down that hole, I, I almost went through the edge of it. But um, having a blast with the aniline dye and different ways of applying it, kind of using it like uh, watercolors. Playing around, having fun. So the story of this thing is I found this piece of wood in the trash. Somebody uh, glued it together in the guild and uh, just throw it in the waste. And uh, uh, I took half of it, give to Rick Bywater, and, uh, and that's the other half. So I practiced with the hollow form and did the inside. And that's my story. Yeah, 5.30 in the morning comes really early for me. I have to get up. Um, whoever put the piece of mesquite back there on the shelves, thank you very much. 
Um, I kind of followed the Tim Yoder pottery thing and thought, well, I'll just make three things that, three forms that we kind of do as wood turners, a vase, a hollow form, and the last one I had, because the piece was kind of messed up, was a little goblet. So I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I might cut them off and just have them, or I might just leave them on there. But uh, it was fun. It was fun, a little exercise. I have a nephew that just uh, graduated from Rutgers Law, and I'm trying to give him ambition to be a judge one of these days. I decided I should have. I put the Rutgers R and it says law because that's the way the Rutgers law symbol is. And I wish I would have inverted it on one side so that when he, if he ever has one of those guys that come up for a second or third offense, he could just pop them on the head and it'd just stick that emblem on their head. Uh, I saw uh, little scoops in a magazine, I think, one time when I was looking through, uh, like little coffee scoops or something. So. Fun little spindle project for beginning spindle turners. Um, hollowed it out and then just ran it on the belt sander to get the angles on there and uh, gooped around with some color again. But that was a fun little project. Um, this is some of the same spalted maple that I seem to be get hung up on. Uh, the, the biggest platter that I've done so far, I think it's 23 and a half or so, and turned to final thickness all in one shot. And originally I was going to relief carve uh, some feathers on it, and I drew them out and, st and almost started and decided I just wasn't, gonna wasn't going to... Uh, Spend that much time doing it, so I painted and painted them instead with uh, with oil paints. So. Where did you find that piece of wood? Watching Tim Yoder again, I uh, thought this was the world's best idea, an alarm clock that can't wake you up. <laughs> and then I recessed the clock mechanism in here, and that's what the button and back's for, so you could push it out so you could get to the battery. <laughs> now I just have to make the baby. And make a whole, f you know, like uh, A and W. Papa, Mama, and I need a baby. <laughs> so I saw a, a practice uh, that the Jack uh, Carson made, and I like the design, so I try to do it. And if you ever you, if you've never done this, it's really a cool practice. It started with a perfect cube that you mount between two centers. And it's uh, you can see that it can be uh, three balls, one inside and one. So it's, it's a nice practice. Uh, uh, when you do that, you need to watch out because the corners are really can't be seen when you turn it, so that's it. This is my Humpty Dumpty project. 
in the sense that I wanted to do a live edge, and this is oriented so that it's across the log at the very top. So that's how you get the nice slope from the live edges on it. And uh, this has a groove cut in it, which I hope next for show and tell, my sister does polymer clays with multiple designs and colors and so forth. And so she sent me two or three samples for another piece that's a little bigger that she's going to put the polymer clay in on the, the groove. So we'll see how that turns out. So stay tuned. And while I wasn't doing anything else, I was so inspired by our illustrious treasures demo back here, give him a big round of applause. I liked his <laughs> demo. That I said, I can do that. So eBay, here I came, uh, and he ordered two 24-inch pieces of three-quarter by inch and a quarter aluminum, and uh, a couple of pieces of inch and a quarter aluminum rod, uh, six uh, flange bushings, and uh, I have a, a big box of hones that have Morris taper, number two tapers on the end of them, which have been absolutely useless, except with a wrench, you know, you get them in, you try to turn them around. But I found out that uh, one way is we've got the most beautiful Morris taper speed control, and with the tailstock going into a pre-bored half inch or half inch hole, you can do a beautiful job of, of reaming to your precision bore that you need to put the bushings in. So the other trick of the trade is how do you get the nice tension so that it moves relatively smoothly without precision boring to give you, you know, true craftsman is to use a, a shaft that you drill on both ends and tap, and then you make a cap that sets on top of the shaft and put a spring washer, or in this case, just a split washer, but I'll use a, a dome washer, so that what you do is tension these parallel bars by tightening the cap that you're putting over the, the, the uh, shaft that goes through it. So when it's all said and done, get the wrench out, do a little adjustment on the, the, uh, the tensioning springs, and put it on your lathe, and then you find out, oh, darn, this piece is a quarter inch too short. Yeah, you know, I didn't use the tape measure to lay this out. I just went and made it. So I said, uh, called up one of the machine shops, KB down at Olathe, and said, you guys got any stock aluminum? And they said, yeah. So they contributed without charge, six inches of inch and a half, and that's, we had to re had one redo. But anyway, put it on the lathe, and it works. So thank you, Jerry. <laughs> and this was, this was my tool I had made previously for the, inner boring, which I think you just about have to have to manage this, and I hope this will do as well as this, and it's certainly a lot more convenient. So thank you.